today on Divorce Court. Today's couple had me seeing double. She wants more of his undivided attention, but he says nothing can come between him and his twin brother. So how can he make his better half happy and still be his brother's keeper? They're asking me to help them figure out the balance. Divorce Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Ebony Zagori and Dwight Marcus. The two of you have been together for 10 years, married for three years. Now you're in trouble. You've come to me for some help. Ms. Zagori, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me why you think your marriage is in trouble? Your Honor, I think that my marriage is in trouble because my husband, Dwight, doesn't pay a lot of attention to me. Um, in the beginning of our relationship, things were very good. We would spend a lot of time together. Now, he likes to uh, have a lot of company and a lot of friends over. For instance, uh, my birthday was earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And we planned to have an evening at home. I had cooked dinner, had the kids to bed. Now, I don't know if he did this intentionally, but his friend came over, and then they started playing video games. And at that point, I'm like, you know, I did all of this, you know, for us to spend a nice evening together, and you just totally messed it up. So instead of having an argument about it, I just went and sulked in my bed by myself. Mm -hmm. Mr. Marcus, did you come up light on her birthday? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And what was going through your mind at the time? Uh, pretty much, you know, everything, stress, you know, that's why, I mean, I called him over on purpose. Why did you call him if you knew it was her birthday and she had plans? I think it was just a whole lot of stuff built up because for, I'm gonna give you a, a prime example Tell of me. on Father's Day, you know, she just up and just left me at the bus stop, you know, like over a little argument because I lost in the, at the gambling shack that night before. You're not telling me you hurt her feelings on her birthday on purpose because she hurt your feelings on Father's Day. Yes. Holy moly, Macadoli, pudding and pie. You're a grown <laughs> man. You got in a fight about, you know, gambling away money. Which women will fight with you about if that's what you're doing? And, and you did this? Okay. Yeah. Tell me any other stories that would lead me to believe that he ignores you. When we do go out, um, he engages conversation with, like, other people. Um, like, say, for instance, if the game is on, you know, he'll be talking to somebody at another table about the game. And we rarely go out. So I'm like, when we are out, I would prefer that you pay attention to me and that we spend this time together. But, you know, he always makes it an issue when I try to bring those things up to him. Okay. Mr. Marcus, your response to that, is she overreacting? Yes, she is. I'm a, I'm a people's person, you know? I mean, if I see somebody make eye contact with me, I'm gonna say, hi, how you doing? You know, what case might be. Of course, if the game on, you know, me and this guy like the same team, you know, I'm gonna collab with him a little bit, you know? Are you more friendly with everybody else than, than your, main, your main thing right there? No, but she stresses me out a lot, you know? I mean... I got it. Well, I, I want to talk about that because you say you feel like his mother, like he's a, your fourth child. Yeah. Why do you say that? For example, him getting a job. He won't take the initiative to go look for a job himself. I apply him for the jobs, I make the resume, I get his clothes ready, I set up the interviews, and I'm like, if I'm doing all of this for you and you're not gonna go and, you know, take the time to try and nail it, I could be doing this for myself. Mr. Marcus, does she do all that for you? Prime example, controlling. I don't feel I that's mean, controlling. I mean, she, she, all the jobs that she gives me, I don't even want. It's not I about don't. a she, well, Let me ask about, you this. Go, keep, 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 keep going. What about, uh, she know I want to, um, take up trade and construction or be a fitness instructor. Right. Yeah, but she want to try to throw me jobs that, you know, I don't even it's want. It's any but old still, job. Any old job, you know, like. Let me ask you this, Mr. Marcus. Wouldn't it be cool if you just went out and got the job you wanted? Yes. Yes. So why don't you do that? I mean, because, hey, um, I got you an interview. I'm like, what do you mean you got me an interview? Yeah, I don't but, know but, nothing but, about but, what but she's talking about. But you get about. your own interview at the job that you... Yeah, that's great, baby, but I already got an interview at the job I want. You understand that? Yes. Okay, all righty. Um... <laughs> You say that you're concerned about him, that you live in a bad neighborhood. Tell me about the night with the gunshots. Uh, he was coming home late. It was about 1, 2 in the morning. He's walking, and I'm calling him, like, where are you? So then I hear shots ring. And then I go outside, 
and there he is on the ground. And I don't know if this man is dead, alive. So, you know, that's a lot, you know. So I get to him and I call the ambulance, the ambulance comes. He's such a drama queen and so over the top. You've been shot, but you're concerned about them cutting your clothes off. The man's like, we have to cut your clothes off. He's like, no, no, my brother bought me this outfit. I'll just take it off. I'm like, who does that? You know, like. <laughs> Mr. Marcus, were you laying on the ground shot? Yes. But did not want to have your clothes cut off of you? Yes, Your Honor. You weren't worried about being shot? I was already shot. <laughs> He has a good point there. <laughs> Can't fix that. Exactly. You, you're going forward. You wanted to control <laughs> how it went. Do you understand that she's concerned about, you know, your goings on? I mean, do you believe that you lead a lifestyle that would lend to getting shot? Yes. Yes, he hangs out with a lot of the wrong people in a lot of the wrong places. And I'm like, he tries to make comparisons between me and him. He's like, well, you go out with like your aunt or your dad and things like that, but you know I'm going to but safe places. But they're not places. out there shooting yeah, people. We're not, yeah. I got you, I got you, yeah. I, I, I'm with you. I wanna move on to what I believe is one of the most important issues that you have. You have a twin brother? Yes, ma'am. With which you have some very interesting history and your twin brother and your wife do not get along and that is causing trouble. I actually think she's jealous of our relationship. We started going out a lot together. I guess she started seeing that, that bond coming back with me and my brother. When you say a lot, how many times a week is a lot? Probably seven days. <laughs> <laughs>
behaving as if he is single as well. Yes, and that's basically what it was. I'm like, it's cool to go out with your brother, but we have three kids, you know, you're married. Like, you can't live the same life that he can live. You think he's a bad influence on him? A little bit. Yeah. Mr. Marcus, number one, do you believe, if you really step back and look at it, that you're neglecting your duties as a husband in an effort to reestablish your relationship with your brother? No. Not at all. Not at all? No. I mean, So I... you spend time with her, you make... She feels important to you. I mean, we do everything together. We wake up together, we feed the kids, we drop them off, we go wash them together, we go wash the car, and we, we go out together, we do everything together. And once he came back, like, I started to realize, like, I don't get no freedom. Like, all I do is everything with her, which is what I'm supposed to do. But at the same time, why I can't go out and just relax? Well, how often do you need to relax away from her? I mean, I understand seven days is too much, but, you know, I can break it down to, like, two, <laughs> three. Okay, you, you... you're going out with him, but then you still have people over all the time, you know, so if it's not out with him, then it's people in my home. So it's, it's just a lot to juggle. She has people over at the house, too. Second, Mr. Marcus, second, Mr. Marcus, give me a minute here. Do you see her point of view at all? Or do you think she's just being bossy and controlling? That's what I think she's being bossy and controlling. I mean, when I say seven days, that doesn't mean we actually go off for of seven days, because seven days might be three days out the week I'm over their house kicking it. The other four, we out. I understand. <laughs> and let me tell you why you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this man is married. She's one of the best things he's got. He does what she's supposed to do. Laundry. That's, That's a woman's job. No! Oh. Is this a man's job? <laughs> How often would you approve of your spouse going out without you? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Second, Mr. Marcus, I'm not gonna fuss at you. Because you're trying, you're getting back with your brother after a long separation, and I believe so strongly in that fraternal bond. But let me say this to you. It's too much. This man is married. And if you're with him all day, every day, and it's intrusive, you throw a monkey wrench in it. And you're, you're more fun than she is, because she's asking him to do laundry, and it's easy to distract him. And all I'm saying is, she's one of the best things he's got. Don't be so focused on having fun, that, finger down, that, that you cause him to lose the best thing in his life. What you got to say for I set you down? He does what she's supposed to do, laundry. That's, That's a woman's job. No! <laughs> Is this a man's job? <laughs> Have a seat, Mr. Marcus. <laughs> yeah, but I'm about to hurt you. <laughs> uh, um, did, did you hear anything I said, Mr. Marcus? Did, did any of that ring true to you about your need to nurture the marriage? Yes, but it's kind of hard to nurture the marriage when you are with the fellas watching the football game and you they, oh, here come your wife. She's right behind you. <laughs> what? What is she doing here? Now, okay, okay, let's... Me. All right, I, I hear you. I'm gonna go over here, Mrs. Gorey. Now, when he does have fella time, do you intrude upon it? He had been doing it so much, and it mm -hmm. just became, like, excessive. And then that's when I, like, pop up on him, like, you know, we got three kids at home, like, I need you, you know? Let me tell you this. The pop-ups are working against you. Okay. Because once you start popping up, your presence becomes the enemy. Okay. You don't want your presence to be the enemy. You know, when he's going out too much, you sit down and say, now, look, I miss you, and I love you, and the kids need to be with you. On Friday, it's us. How about that, baby? Okay. Would that work with you? Yes, I will. Now, if you give a Friday, it's easier to take Saturday with him. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I wish it was that easy. Oh, but it is. I'm telling her to change, and then I'm telling you to change behind no, that. It's easy for me. I'm not talking. I'm talking about. I wish it was that easy for her. But I'm do. telling her what to do. Did you hear me tell her <laughs> what to do? She's not gonna listen. Yes, I am. She's gonna do the same thing. I just want thing. them to understand, like, for the last 10 years, you know, it's just been me and him. So him coming back and now they're twins, you know, I feel like 
he's in the middle of a tug of war between me and his brother. Mm -hmm. And it's like certain situations, like I wanted to go to San Diego and mm -hmm. I'm like, tell your brother, bring whoever, you know. And he tells his brother and his brother's like, oh, I don't want to go. So he's like, oh, I don't want to go. And I'm like, man, My, like. Oh, Mr. Marcus, did you do that? I didn't do it the way she's saying it. <laughs> so you but didn't, but in, in, in the end, you did it. She, she already had the attitude once he bailed out. It was over. It wasn't you know, about him bailing out. You bailed out after he bailed out. She wasn't mad that he bailed out. She would love to have you to herself. She was mad that you bailed out behind him. You see what I'm saying? I like you people. I'm gonna help you out. What would you do if your spouse made their sibling their top priority? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. I like y'all a lot. I even like you over there. <laughs> <laughs> and here's what I'm trying to say. You can't push him back. You can't pull him back. You got to persuade him back. Do you want to know what he said in his compatibility test? Sure. He wants more sex. <laughs> <laughs> That's something Brother Marcus over there can't do. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? If you want something from people, my, my mother used to always tell me, don't demand what you want. Make them want to give it to you. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Make it want to give it to you. And, and men in general, a little extra sex always makes them nice. And it, it, it makes them calm. <laughs> it makes them come home. It makes them do a lot of things. <laughs> and he can't get that from him. Yeah. Make sure he gets it from you. Or you tell him to go home. Ain't that right? Yeah. <laughs> I get the sense from you, Mr. Marcus, that you don't want to pick and choose, but you want to have them both brought together. Is that, is that true? Yes. Do you want to say something to either one of them or both of them to give you an opportunity to reset that relationship? Yes. Go right ahead, sir. Baby, I didn't marry you for nothing. I love you very much. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Dwayne. You're my twin brother, you know what I mean? We stuck together, and it's like I'm stuck in the middle between both of y'all, and Judge, I was just wondering if, you know, they could hug each other or something. <laughs> now, I can't order nothing like that. <laughs> but what I will say to this, I think guys don't come before me and make heartfelt requests very often. Mm -hmm. And I think you should both understand and respect that, and that came from his heart. This man really does love you. Thank you. I'll give you a hug, Dwayne. I think that... I don't know if he's on board. Are you on board, my brother? I'm not sure. Go ahead. Hug the woman. Ain't nothing like family. You know what I mean? Everybody on your team, everybody on your side, I wish you all the best of luck. This matters to Do you think you can make the relationship work with you and this twin brother? Yeah, I really like his brother, and I hope that, you know, we can work on our relationship also while they're working on theirs. I know it's my twin, but I got to give him their space because he is married now. Right. I think I didn't cause enough ruckus already. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs>since we came to court, everything's been good. Um, my relationship has gotten better. We spend a lot more time together. And, you know, even this guy right here has given us our space. I've been staying away. I'm giving him two days out the week, maybe three every now other week. Everything is great now. 